Hello, everybody. Today's stream, we are going to be critiquing an art school portfolio by high school artist Labiba Zaman. I apologize if I didn't pronounce your name correctly. If you would like to grow as an artist and you can't afford an art class, we've got everything you need here Art Prof, critiques, tutorials, and professional development. What I would like to do first is give all of you a little bit of insight into Labiba's artwork, who, by the way, is live here in the chat with us. We're so happy to have you here while we're critiquing your portfolio. I really hope I'm saying your name correctly. If I'm not, maybe you can tell me in the chat. But if you go down to the video description below, you will see that we have Labiba's artist statement available. And they say, I'm a 17 year old Bengali American Muslim woman who graduated high school a year early and currently taking a gap year. And largely Labiba is pretty much learning everything about animation and digital art online on their own. And Labiba explains, what I want is to have more representation, to have characters that look like me and people who generally aren't seen on the big screen. I also want to portray who I am, tell my story as well, because my entire life, I haven't been heard and I'm honestly sick of it. I want to grab people's attention to important changes and have others understand that no one is ever alone in their story. I want to be the role model I never had as a kid, and I want to be an animator because of that. So that is absolutely wonderful, Labiba, that you are already thinking about that stuff because I think a lot of times when you're a younger artist, you're in high school, there's just so much emphasis on just developing technique. That's very important. But I can already see, Labiba, that you've got something to say, and that's phenomenal. And I urge you to stick with that and keep thinking about ways that you can change the representation. Tell me in the chat, who here feels that they did not grow up with or currently do not see themselves portrayed in media, in art, in movies? Tell me about that experience because as much as we would like to hope that we're making progress in terms of representation, oh boy, we've got a long way to go. Now, taking a quick overall glance on your entire portfolio, Labiba, I'm very excited about your work because you have a lot of digital work and we have an animated piece towards the end of the portfolio that we will be looking at. But I'll tell you, I'm very excited about the way that you mix media. For example, there's that, I think it's a self-portrait in the upper left-hand corner, which has a painted section in the middle, there's photography on the side, and it seems like you have a strong interest in digital media, but you're not isolating yourself to digital media. And I see that a lot. I'm all for digital media. I think it's just adding more tools to the artist's belt. But I think sometimes what I see is people say, oh, well, this is the wave of the future. I don't need to bother with all that old stuff. But you sort of do, or at least you should dip your toes in there a little bit just to have that type of experience. I also think, Labiba, that your portfolio, really strong color. I think that the color seems to be something that you're thinking very deliberately about. I mean, there's some pieces here that I think are better than others in terms of color, but I'll tell you that architectural piece that's on the far right, lower right-hand corner, that piece is just so striking in terms of color. And I think what I see very often people who are in high school before they've gone to college is that they tend to have a very literal way of looking at color. The sky is blue, the tree is brown, but you're using very unusual, very exaggerated colors. And those choices that you're making in terms of your color scheme, they feel very intentional. And that's a very big difference. I think sometimes I'll work with students in high school and I'll say to them, well, why did you decide to use this color? And they just look at me <laughs> with this blank stare like, uh, I thought it looked cool, but I suspect, Labiba, that you're somebody who would have an answer for me. It does seem like 
a lot of your work is very thoughtful, that none of it is by accident. And I think you're in really good shape considering that you just finished high school. I know you've been accepted to a number of art schools. And here, here's the thing, you guys. Most people who get art school portfolio critiques from me are people who are going to be applying in the fall and they want to get some feedback. Well, Biba already got in and yet she still wants feedback from us. I mean, that is somebody who is really driven because after you prepare an art school portfolio, it's really easy to just be like, oh, I'm done, which is fine. I mean, you can totally do that. You can collapse when your portfolio is done. But I think a big part of being an artist is just always feeling the need that you can do better. Hopefully not to the point that it's debilitating or it gets in the way of you actually producing work. But I can see that even though you've done so well in a lot of these areas, you're still pushing yourself. And that type of self-initiative is priceless. You can't learn that anywhere. That comes from you pushing yourself, which is really phenomenal. Emma says, I looked a lot like Katara. I actually know who you're talking about now because <laughs> I've been watching Avatar The Last Airbender with my kid recently. So I was really attached to her. And let's see what else people are saying about representation. Faiza, who, by the way, converted <laughs> Labiba over to Art Prof. And we did actually review Faiza's portfolio several months ago. Faiza says, as a South Asian, I've only seen a few stereotype characters that look a little bit like me. And Jessica says, I don't see myself portrayed accurately as someone who struggles with mental illness. Most of the time, it's so, quote, dramatized. Yeah, I mean, it's like you get that really superficial version that really does not dig that deep. All right, let's dig into some of the artworks. Oh, sorry, Fizza. Sorry, <laughs> I can't remember how to pronounce anybody's name, Fizza. Okay. <laughs> All right, so let's start with the self-portrait. And I'll tell you, I love the texture in the portrait. And I don't know if this was your intent, Labiba, but I do feel that that person inside looks very raw. Almost, I mean, this is a little bit gory, but it almost looks like a flayed person. I almost feel like I'm seeing the raw muscles and tendons inside that figure. But the thing is, you did it without actually painting that. So what I'm saying is the way that you've painted with such like thick, pink, vibrant colors, it has the feeling of this almost gory look, but you don't actually have like drops of blood everywhere, which is what I would expect a lot of people to do. But I guess my interpretation of it is that the exterior of the figure, especially on the right-hand side, because there are these like stars that make things look very polished and very pretty, and yet it almost feels like these two sides of the figure are like crushing this figure in the middle. Like there's definitely this physical pressure that I'm starting to feel between the two figures. And I think that's wonderful. So I don't know, Labiba, if I'm like way, way off in terms of the interpretation, but it's definitely a piece that makes me think about the inside of a person versus the outside of a person, what you choose to say about yourself. And honestly, that's like a really, really cliche idea. That is not new. A lot of people have used that idea before, but Labiba, you made this your own. This is definitely your interpretation. I don't feel that it's a cliche, even though the idea itself has been done a billion times. And a lot of it is the specifics of it. I think the fact that it's an actual photo, I think the filter, is nice, like those little stars, they're there, but they don't call that much attention to themselves. And so it takes a little bit of time before you actually get in there. Yeah, Seven Angelic says, yes, it's like we just cracked open a rib cage. Maya Hika says, it really looks like we've opened what's inside. And Pearl says, I really like how the face is painted. It almost looks sculpted. Yeah, and actually, Laviva, I really think you would like Soutine's paintings. Soutine was a Russian painter. He worked in the beginning of the 20th century, mostly 
in Paris and he was an expressionist painter, but I mean, look, at, I mean, he literally was painting raw beef. Like <laughs> it's really gory looking, but he has a really muscular way of moving the paint that I just absolutely love. And I really feel that your portrait has that rawness to it without being so blatant. So great job there. The one thing that I work on in this piece is I don't know that I really like the cut out wavy white line. Basically asking yourself, how do we get from the photo to the painting? And that like white divide, which I'm guessing is like where you cut out the photo, it feels a little bit flat to me. And I wonder if you could think about, I don't know if it's a matter of letting parts of the paint spill over into the painting, but I do feel that that's a little bit too crisp. It's a little bit too nice, I suppose, for the subject matter that you're talking about. I'd like to feel maybe a little bit more organic. I suppose it's just an issue of the edge just feeling so crisp. That's something I would definitely consider. Yeah, check out Soutin. You know, he's not a painter that a lot of people know about. And it really bums me out <laughs> because he's so good. I mean, maybe this is not everybody's cup of tea, but I mean, these are intense paintings. I just think they're incredible. Okay, so let's take a look at this next piece. This is an acrylic on canvas and it's called Street Rat. And I'm surprised this is acrylic. I actually thought it was maybe an acrylic painting with marker on top of it. And Labiba, I don't know if you've done any work with markers, but I feel like based on this piece and the way that you're layering colors and building them up opaquely, I think you would have so much fun with markers. Because Lauren Welch, one of the teaching artists here at Art Prof, she started using markers because she really felt like acrylic was a little slow. And marker was a great way to really throw down thick, luscious passages of color without going through all the trouble that acrylic painting can sometimes provide. So you might actually look into that. I guess looking at it, my first thing is I got lost by the love poster. Text is a problem. You've heard me harp on people's <laughs> text in their images probably many times before. And this one, I think in particular, Part of it is the yellow that's underneath love, because actually the rest of the composition in terms of color, it's pretty muted. Really, the two most brightly saturated colors are the yellow under love and then that like sky blue stripe on the right hand side. So those are two areas that I just get to immediately. And I guess spatially, you could do better with this one. I, I almost thought that the garbage bag, the one that's sort of shaped like a water balloon, the one that's like right on top of the figure, I thought it was literally on the figure, like physically. But now that I'm looking at it, I'm realizing, oh no, that garbage bag is actually in the alleyway. The person is sitting in front of it and they're overlapping, but it's not physically contacting. And you know what, Labiba? I think that linear perspective police is coming to get you <laughs> because uh, you got to figure this out. Even something minor, like those lines on the sidewalk, that corner of the building that gets in the way. And you might just think about making the image a little bit less clean. I feel that there's a lot of action in the figure and I'm trying to figure out what the figure is doing. But I guess what I'm trying to say is I think the background is actually the weakest part of the piece. Like the figure I'm engaged with, I'm wondering what are they doing? I like the interaction of the colors. But the background to me, it just feels really flat and also quite generic. I, I don't get a feeling that there's anything that specific going on in here. Ayane says, it feels like it's an isometric perspective, yet not meant to be at the same time. It feels like there's no depth. Well, I'm not even going to get into isometric <laughs> perspective right now, but I would say the sidewalk panels those to me look like isometric perspective, but the thing is I don't really know what's going on with the building. And so it's not that you can't use isometric perspective. Look it up if you don't know what I'm talking about, but I think it's just that things don't really match that well. 
Trump says, I like the line work, but it needs more contrast between the person in the shadow alley. Yeah, I just feel like there's a real opportunity here to tell a story about this person. I mean, people are oftentimes defined by their surroundings in a way that we forget about. And I also am not convinced that the figure really is sitting there. I don't feel their weight. I definitely think to consider figure and ground, how does that figure actually interact with what's happening? I mean, little things like sometimes even a bit of a fold in the clothing can show the gravity of that figure. And so I would definitely think about that. All right, so now we have a character sheet. This is done digitally, and I'm gonna guess that the character is named Amira. Sorry if I'm mispronouncing that name, you can correct me. And I really like this character a lot because first of all, there's a very wide range of emotions. I mean, th this is my take just based on what's here, Labiba is that they seem a little bit moody. I don't know, maybe it's the facial expression on the left-hand side, this like crooked mouth. I love that angle. But then in the middle, they seem sort of like they're stargazing. And then the facial expression on the lower right, they seem a little bit nervous, a little bit suspicious. So I think definitely you've gotten a great range of facial expressions. Like oftentimes what I see in character design is people want to do all these facial expressions, but a lot of them, they're too close to each other. Like I'll see three expressions and they're all just like variations on the theme. I mean, one thing you have to be careful about though, is you really want to make sure it looks like the same person every single time. And I would argue that the figure on the left doesn't look like the same character as the middle yellow one and the lower right pink one. I don't know if maybe you need to do something to shift that a little bit more. I mean, I suppose the reason the yellow and the pink one look similar to me is that they both have the little pointed part of, I guess they would be the eyelashes, but I guess the figure on the left has their eyes closed. Oh, good, so I did get that. Laviva says she is super moody. That is really cool. And Pagarami says, what's up? My professor wants me to start my portfolio to apply to college and I'm gonna start watching these streams. Well, you can just binge all of our art school portfolio critiques because there are a lot of them and it's really great to see the range of what people can create. And let's see, Labiba says she's the same, the hijab, is that, am I saying that correctly? Sorry, tell me if I'm wrong, <laughs> the hijab. Color changes. Oh, so this is not the same piece of clothing. The clothing changes color based on the mood. Oh, that is so cool. I mean, I know obviously we're not watching an animation so we can't really see that, but I think that's a great, I, I've never heard of anything like that. Phoebe P says, I like how you included the weapons in this. Maybe having her interact with the weapons would make it even more interesting. Yeah, I would say, Labiba, if you can make another one where we can see Amira's grip on those swords and the stance that she takes, I think that would really help out a lot. I mean, a couple just formal things I would say about the figures. I think that it's not a great idea for them to overlap. So does everybody see the figure in the upper left? their yellow sneakers are overlapping the lower left-hand figure. I would just not do that. I think that it makes it a little bit hard to look at the characters. And another thing I would say is really think about your background because actually this purpley pinkish background color, I think that it's not doing you a lot of favors right now. I actually think I would much prefer that background to either be maybe just like white or a neutral white or something. I mean, I'm not saying you can't have color in the background. It's just, I find that that purple, it's pretty close to the pink. And value wise, if I were to take your character sheet and make it black and white, I would not have a very good value range. So I think with character design, you really wanna think a little bit more carefully about the value because right now you're relying a lot on color contrast and value is one of those things that a lot of people just forget about because it's easy. Usually when you're thinking about color, that's the case. 
Mayahika says, especially in character turnarounds, you need to have a lot of guides to make sure it stays consistent. Yeah. I'm not a character designer. I can't speak to the specifics of it. But if you go to Jordan McCracken Foster's Instagram, he's got a bunch of character sheets there. And I would definitely follow something a little bit more organized because I think that the layout of your character sheet, it's a little bit scattered. Things like the fact that the head on the lower left are cropped, that makes it hard to see. I'm also not a fan of the text. I think that the way you've written a mirror at the top, it looks a little bit sloppy. It's a little hard to read some of the other stuff. I'm not saying you can't handwrite it, but it's got to feel a little bit more deliberate. It seems like it was thrown in there at the last minute. So even little things like the font or how you're writing is pretty important. This is great advice from Mayahika who says, you can look up character designers and their portfolios and observe how they organize their characters. Exactly. All right. The other thing, Labiba, you got to work on clothing. <laughs> your clothing is not happening. I'm sorry to tell you this. But if your character has all these folds and the outfit is clearly a big part of their personality, you got to work on clothing because the clothing right now, it's very mushy and it's very bulgy. I mean, I almost feel like the figure on the lower right feels more like a marshmallow. It, it doesn't have that different weight distribution. So I really recommend Labiba that you go through this series that Jordan and I did on how to draw clothing. And basically every stream, we go over a different fold and clothing is really hard. Tell me in the chat <laughs> who here struggles with drawing clothing. It's one of the most difficult things to do, but if you're going to have characters and you're going to do animation, most of the time they're going to be wearing clothes. So this is definitely a skill you don't want to put off. I think it's really important to develop this for sure. Elvis is asking, how do you review sculptures? The same way we do everything else. And we actually do have a couple of sculpture critiques. And also we do have a sculpture portfolio by an MFA student that I definitely recommend that you check out. Oh, this is interesting. Octavio says, I think it's possible to do an illustration that shows that the hijab changes color, gradienting or something. That's a great idea. Play with that, Labiba, because I'll tell you, if that's a fundamental part of the character and I don't get that from the character sheet, that's not great because that's such a great feature of your character. And if we lose that quality, that does make it more difficult for us to do. Fizza says, I do figure drawings of just cloth sometimes. <laughs> yeah. Mary X Bella says, for some reason, I find clothing to be really easy, maybe because I wanted to be a fashion designer. Well, that definitely helps for sure. Oh my gosh, I don't even think I could knit a scarf. <laughs> it would be like really bad. Blaine says, I struggle specifically with black leather shiny jackets. Oh, there's one stream where I draw a black leather jacket. It was not a walk in the park, <laughs> but it was really, really fun. Okay, so this is a piece called Hushed Plush. It's in marker and charcoal. That's so interesting, Libby, but I didn't even notice the marker work until I read that there was marker in here. That's really cool. So Libby, but I'm actually wondering, did you do the marker first and then put the charcoal on top or did you go back and forth? Because I think marker and charcoal, it's not really to media that I typically see people using together. So I think it's a really cool combination, but you might want to think about letting the marker be a bit more prominent. Right now, the marker feels like it's tickling the charcoal. Like it's not having that big of an impact. And you have some pieces later in the portfolio where I think you're doing an amazing job of merging the materials. Here, not so much. I mean, I almost feel like you could take away the marker and I wouldn't really notice that dramatically. So you might want to think more about what are those roles that you could be thinking about. Soitan Lee says an animation would be the best way to show the color and mood change. I mean, yes, but sometimes if Labiba were posting that character sheet on Instagram and there's no animation to accompany it, 
you probably want to come up with some visual that might at the very least hint at that. Elvis is asking, can we submit work for you to review? You can. The link is in the video description below and you can submit your work then to have a free portfolio critique online. All right. I think what I find a little bit distracting in this piece, Labiba, is the, I call this right hand stroking. Okay. So if you're right handed, typically speaking, if you're not thinking deliberately about it, you're going to shade like this. Okay. And that's where I see the right hand stroking is very deliberate in the marker work. And I don't see a compelling reason why we need that to be so consistent because this is a plush and it seems like it's got, I don't know if it's doll furniture or something, but I get the feeling maybe because of the consistency of those strokes, most of the objects in your drawing feel like they're made out of the same thing. And so what I would try to do is think more about, well, how do I contrast these objects? How do I make it really clear that this plush doll is really different than that chair? Because to me, they're the same right now. And so you have to say like, what is gonna really make them stand out? All right, Labiba says, it was just used to have a toned background. Empty canvases are scary. Okay, so what I recommend you do Instead of using marker, use vine charcoal, which is very soft and not that dark. You just tone the whole page with vine charcoal, rub it in with your hand, and then you can remove with an eraser and you can add charcoal. And we have several charcoal tutorials that do demonstrate how to do that. Because yeah, I mean, that white page can be very intimidating. And I guess I just want to see the figure really interact with the chair. Okay, because like Lisa is saying, is this doll standing in a chair? Yes, he has a tiny chair, but see like play with that a little bit more. Like to me, the chair almost feels like an afterthought in this piece. And I almost feel like the interaction of the chair to me is more interesting than all the other stuff. I mean, I like the other stuff. I'm glad you don't have a blank background, but I feel like I'm not really sure where you want me to look because you also have this, I guess it's like a soda cup on the left-hand side. And I'm trying to figure out like what's going on there, what's going on with the doll. And so it's almost like you're not communicating to me clearly enough. Where is the hierarchy in the story? Like what is the most important part of this image? What is somewhat important? What is not important? And I think right now you're sort of giving the same level of importance to everything. And so we end up feeling... <clears throat> as we look at the drawing that were spread, I think a little bit too thin. <laughs> this is as yes, we went shopping at Build-A-Bear. That's, that's great, I love that. I went to Build-A-Bear the other day, actually, because I was at the mall. My daughter had never seen it before, so she was like very curious to know. I would also say, Labiba, again, work on your value, because when I look at the charcoal drawing, you're not afraid of the black, you have the bright whites, you've got some gray, but I think if I were to really pick at this, I feel like there's two shades of gray or that many. And actually the gray is the hard part because making something white and making something black, that's pretty straightforward, but really getting like a range of grays, it's very challenging. It is not an easy thing to pull off. So I highly recommend this stream where we talk about value and how you can get that to work in your piece. I want to give a shout out to Sonnet. Thank you so much for the super sticker. We greatly appreciate your support. When you contribute to Art Prof, what you're all doing is you're making it possible for somebody to learn art on their own, which Labiba, as you said in your art statement, that was the case for you. You really had to teach yourself. And not everybody can pay $500 for an online course. So that's where it goes. We're able to provide free art education because of your support. So everybody, thank you so much for what's all of your contributions. All right, so this next piece that we're looking at is called Topsy Turvy and it's digital. I really like the color scheme here. I think it's ethereal and mysterious. It's interesting because I would think normally 
that bright magentas like this would look all happy and perky, but it's not. And you know something, Labiba? I think a lot of it is the value range. I think it's those like dark navy blues in the background, this like very pale pink. I, I really think the value is responsible for that being the case. I love the textures. I think they're interesting because they're not quite bark, but it's not really mushrooms or lichen either. You're sort of inventing your own form of nature on these trees. And, and that's really nice because I think if you didn't do that, it might just look like an ordinary forest based on the marks. But these are strange. They're a little bit ambiguous. And the second I think, oh, well, maybe it's ivy. It, it's not. There's something odd about that shape. And so I really appreciate the ambiguity of these nature forms that are like crawling up the trees. Yeah, people are loving the color. Alice in Wonderland says, oh, my God, I adore the colors in this piece. Blaine says the pink is so incredibly pleasing to look at. I know. Isn't that strange? Because you would think that pink would be somewhat of a disruptive color in a natural environment like this, but it really is extremely effective. And the feeling of atmosphere and mood is really outstanding. So Trent is asking, what tools did you use for digital? Labiba is replying, Photoshop. And Paula F says, this piece is interesting because it is both happy and mysterious at the same time. Yeah, I like it because the mood doesn't reveal itself right away. On one hand, it does feel mysterious. On the other hand, there's something a little hopeful about it at the same time. I, I just know that it's a very captivating space. And so much of that La Viva is your color. Now, what you do have to work on, though, is atmospheric perspective. Because the depth, I think, is not as strong as the color. I think that to really show these trees going way, way back into the distance, you have to think very deliberately, okay, like what is the foreground? What is the middle ground? What is the background to really push that space? Because you have a couple passages, like I would say some of the blues in the middle pop a little bit too much. So I would look at artists like Casper David Friedrich. I would look at Norman Ackrod. I'll put those names in the chat right now because I know those are hard to spell. But Casper David Friedrich and also Norman Ackrod, they were just masters of atmosphere. I mean, I look at a Norman Ackrod print, I feel like I can smell the air. It's like that's the type of visceral quality that you want your audience to really have. Vivi Adams says the title, Topsy Turvy Got Me Thinking, looked at it upside down. Very cool. Yeah, this is a great piece. You just got to work on the depth and trying to really push some of that stuff backwards into the space. Also, for those of you guys who want to get better at color, I think you can see that the saturation here is a big part of that success. So I highly recommend checking that out. Okay, so we have another piece. This is watercolor, color pencil, and marker. And the title of this piece is Sunken. I think, Labiba, this is one of your weakest pieces in the portfolio, not just technically, but I also think that in terms of just the story, the image, feels fairly cliche. I, I'm not so sure that this one has as powerful of a narrative as, say, some of your other ones. And I don't know, Labiba, if this is a story that you read and you're illustrating it, or if it's a story you wrote or whatever, but I get the feeling that it's an image or story that maybe you're not as invested in because it's not as specific as your other images. And a lot of the colors that you've chosen are typical colors. I mean, usually when people do water, they're going to do blue. When people do vein, not veins, vines, <laughs> they're going to make them green. And I think that here we're seeing things, I'm seeing things that I feel I've seen before many times. And people are asking, Neil is asking, is this a Little Mermaid reference? 
Philippa says she is sinking but looks happy. Also, she has no arms. I was wondering about the arms because I don't know if that looks like it's on purpose because it, it looks so like smooth and perfect. And people I know who maybe don't have arms for one reason or another, it's really that pretty looking. And it just feels a little bit too polished. I mean, then again, this is not supposed to be like hyper realistic looking image. It does feel like it's supposed to be representative of maybe like a fairy tale or something like that. But I think that the design on the face, it's a little bit wonky. Um, clavicle police is not happy with you. Collarbones, in case you guys are wondering what I'm talking about. But yeah, I just think that you have so many other things in your portfolio that are much better that I think this stands out as a piece that is not like celebrating your best qualities. Biza says she's an amputee. Okay, well, show us that. Tell us more about the story because it just feels like a very random part of the image. And I just feel like I don't really, well, first of all, I didn't understand that the person was an amputee. Number two, when I do, I go, okay, why? Why is that part of this image? And what does that have to do with what you're trying to say? I wanna give a shout out to Raleigh Comia. I'm sorry if I mispronounced your name for the super sticker. Thank you so much for your support. We greatly appreciate any contribution you can make so our content can stay 100% free. All right. This is one of my favorite pieces in the portfolio, La Viva. This is so good. Oh my God. This is like, there's so many good, like I, I'm just gonna go on and on. So first of all, I think it's a really contemporary image, okay? It feels deeply personal. And I just think the integration of the collage and the digital is so well done. I mean, I'll be honest, I don't see a lot of digital and traditional merged together in this way that I think is that effective. I, I think what's more typical, what I usually see, somebody will have like line art that they make in say traditional, then they scan it in, they color it or something like that. But it's like in this one, I guess if I really look closely, I can tell what's the collage and what's the, but I have to really, really look. <laughs> like it, it, It's not something that reveals itself that clearly. And I love that integration of the images. Uh, Octavio, in relation to the last piece, says, I'd say including disability in artwork doesn't always have to be a reason, though, in my opinion. Disabled people are just people. Absolutely. You're right about that, for sure. I know that that can be frustrating because oftentimes that is the case, oftentimes in representation. I just felt that there wasn't a lot going on in that narrative. And so there didn't seem to be a very compelling reason surrounding the story. So I, I didn't find it to be, I guess it was sort of like, it was like benign, like it wasn't hurting the piece, but it wasn't helping either. So I guess that's the way that I would put that. Well, see, this is interesting. So Fizza says, I think of Andy Warhol. See, here's the thing though. I did for a minute think about Andy Warhol because you're gonna, if you see squares and bright colors and things like this, but I don't linger on Andy Warhol. I, I don't end up saying to myself like, oh, here's another person ripping off Andy. I don't think about that. It, it's like a minor little piece of that. And this is really interesting. Seven Angelic says, I like how your headphones stay a part of your images, like it's part of the character. Yeah. And that's not something you see all the time. I mean, Phoebe P here says, it reminds me a bit of the Apple MP3 ads with the black silhouettes, but white outline for the headphones. Yeah. Again, there's snippets of that, but Labiba, you made this your own. This is yours, you own this, and I love that. Yeah, like Labiba says, I had so much fun with the color in this piece. And you know something, Labiba? A big part of the success of the color scheme is actually all the stuff around the figures. I don't know if you guys can see, but there's like photographs 
of the face that had been like sort of chopped up and rearranged. So at first you look at that border and you think, oh, it's just all these beautiful colors. But the thing is you go in there, you say, oh, there's a face. I can see somebody's arm. I can see fingers. And so I almost feel like this piece is like regurgitating itself. I don't know. It's really, really cool the way that you have so many repeated motifs and yet it doesn't feel like I'm seeing the same thing over and over again. Sai says, I love the contrast between the block, pop arty color scheme of the squares and similar texture of the face and the background. Yeah, and another brilliant part of the border that's around the people is that you kept the saturation very low. The value is also quite dark. So does everybody see how the background has so much variety, but at the same time though, it doesn't get in the way. Like those figures still pop because of those flat graphic backgrounds. Like I think, Laviva, you are so good at shape and oh, th this piece is stunning. I love this piece. And there are not a lot of people, number one, that like to do architecture. Architecture is hard. It's really, really hard. And it's beautifully stylized. I think the color is magnificent and it's got just a great distribution of shapes. Like I think a lot of people, would be afraid to make such a big, bold shape that's in the sky. But you know what you did, Labiba, that I think was very smart is that if you look at the background, the, the top part of the piece, it's not all one color. Like it, it goes like a little bit more orange as it moves over to the left and it gets a little bit more brown towards the bottom. And so it's like those little things makes such a big difference in terms of depth. Like this is a great example of depth. Like to me, this piece has more depth than the image that was the landscape of like the forest. Like this one has incredible depth. The value's outstanding. Yeah, people are just really blown away by this. Megan B says, I avoid architecture. This is done so well. And Anna Nin says, I love the colors. And Ayane says, you're very experimental. And this is great. Labiba says, this is the view from my grandparents' veranda in Bangladesh. You see, the specificity of that, Labiba, is very important because I think some people would just say, oh, I want to make a building. Okay, here's a Google building, <laughs> you know, and find a random building and, oh, make a... But the thing is, it's like, you look at this. Does everybody see the laundry? The, the little pieces of yellow... I'm gonna guess that's like clothing that's hanging on the side. And then, oh, you guys, the sweet complimentary colors, the yellow on top of the purple. Oh my gosh, that this is such a stunning piece, Labiba. And the fact that it's part of your family narrative is even better. This is really outstanding. I mean, to me, this is very professional looking. Like this does not look like something I would see from somebody who just finished high school. It's really outstanding. All right, this piece says a telephobic. I don't know what that means. Can you tell me Labiba or somebody look it up? I should have looked it up before the stream. I'm sorry about that. Anyway, this is a digital piece. And I don't know if this is, it doesn't look like the same character actually, now that I'm looking at them, but I like the exaggeration of the sneakers. Like the sneakers really pop out to me. I think it's a little distracting that the blue on the pants is the exact same blue as the interior of the umbrella. That just seems awfully convenient. <laughs> so you may wanna just shift that up a little bit more. And I guess same thing goes with the hoodie that the figure's wearing and also the top of the umbrella. So those are areas where it's like, yeah, they could be similar colors, but they really do look like the exact same color. And so I think you want more variation that's going on in there. I will tell you though, the standout part of this piece to me is the background. I mean, I know this sounds terrible. I know this is supposed to be about the figure, but I feel like you could take the figure away and I'd be fine. <laughs> like That's how good the background is. Like the background is almost stealing the show in this piece. The background has the complementary colors. It's got this glow of the yellow and then how it fades away into the distance and becomes much more abstract. 
I love all that. The figure is really like a totally different language. Does everybody see how in the background there's way more transparency? Like the figure in the front almost looks more like a cutout piece of paper. And I just feel like right now, this is almost like two images. One has been collaged on top of the other. So it's almost like you've got two pieces in one. And I don't mind the style of the character. I think the character is fine. It's just when you put that style next to something like that background, they just don't feel like they match. Like on their own, they're fine. I, I just sort of feel like they're not a very good match for each other. And that's where you have to think about relationships. Like you can have two parts that are great by themselves, but together, maybe they don't look so hot. And Ayane says, I feel like if the figure was lifeless, was yellow and purple like that background, it would work better. Would also look great if it was backlit or more abstracted slash geometric. Yeah, because the intensity, the brightness of that yellow, what that is saying is that the glow is coming from behind the figure, in which case it doesn't really make a lot of sense that the sneakers are almost glowing. So this is an issue of like, like how do you really get that figure to work with the background? So I would say, Laviva, it's similar to the figure that was in the alleyway with the trash cans. I think if there's a specific skill, I would recommend that you really try to target. It would be how to put a figure into an environment in a convincing way, in a way that the figure and the background really work together. Because this is really common. Like a lot of people struggle with that. And what ends up happening is the figure looks like it's collaged on, looks like it's floating, like there isn't a lot of interaction. So there are a lot of ways you can do that. But that's definitely a approach that I might think about. Sai so says, I feel like there's a high concentration of geometric shapes here. It would be a little more varied with the body being a tad bit more organic looking. Well, I think it's just apples and oranges. It's like they're fine, but they don't match. That's the main thing. Okay, so the last piece we're gonna look at is actually in animation and the animation does not have any music on it and it's about 11 seconds. So I'm just gonna play it and then we'll play it more times, but there's no sound. So let's just take a look at the animation. So Labiba, I would love it for you to tell people in the chat how this was made. It here says digital rotoscoping. And if you don't know what rotoscoping is, oh God, I can't believe I have to explain this. Where is Deep Deep <laughs> when I need her to explain rotoscoping? But it's basically like live action movement that then you like trace or draw on top of. And so that's where sometimes like the movement is like sort of done for you already. But of course you can do all kinds of things to the colors and the characters and the drawing style that go on top of that. Yeah, so tell me in the chat what you guys think about this. And maybe one of you can offer a more accurate <laughs> explanation of rotoscoping since I'm not an animator and I can't really explain it as well as Deep D. So this is very interesting. We've gotten a bunch of comments like this. Neil says, so hip and trendy. I feel old watching this. Well, so I actually think that that's a really good comment because I feel, Labiba, that this is work that feels so passionate and enthusiastic. And I, I really feel that emotion in this figure. I mean, I love the way you did the clothing in here. I don't know if it's just that it helped you in the rotoscoping process, but even then you still had to simplify that a lot. I mean, it's, it's not like you just traced it. I mean, you, you have to, um, you know, think to yourself, okay, which part am I going to bring out? Which part am I going to make dark and very light? And Jessica says her portfolio is very thematic, which some schools seem to enjoy. It depends. Schools have very different expectations. And so if you are somebody who's applying to art school, I really recommend that you look at what the schools are looking for, because it's not always exactly the same thing. Ananin says, I love that you carry a distinctive style through your pieces. 
And Phoebe says, Tower is a documentary with parts of in rotoscope if anyone wants to see another example of rotoscoping. Yeah, it's really, really fun. I mean, Labiba, to me, you're doing stuff that is not just well done, but very comprehensive. Like you guys look at the background, okay? It's just a simple gradient. It's purple on the left, it's pink on the right, but it matches the character really, really well. And again, it's such a simple thing, having one color turn into another, and yet that's giving this character a certain degree of depth that would not be there if that background was like that. So Labiba, I mean, your color is just phenomenal. I think that you're using it intentionally, you're using it to show depth, you're using it to define characters and personalities. Really great work there. Seven Angelic says, wow, good job in the animation. I'm craving sound because of the way it looks like you're singing. I mean, I, I can't wait to see you do your first film. <laughs> It'll be very, very exciting. Octavio says, how long does it tend to take for a portfolio to be critiqued once submitted? It really depends on our schedule, but usually people have to wait at least a few weeks, sometimes up to a month, because obviously we can't just throw people into the middle of the schedule, but we do the best we can to do it within a month. That's about right. Yeah, so I'm very excited about all this work, Labiba, and I would just say, hold on to those personal narratives because I can tell you have a lot to say and I wanna know more about this. And I would also suggest when you start submitting your work, really dig into that personal narrative. I mean, I'm so happy that you talked about representation in the statement, but I think I would love to hear more about your background as a, I think, um, Bengali American Muslim female. I think that would be really important because people oftentimes just don't have that information and they need to know more specifically um, about your own personal narrative and background. So by the way, if you guys want like a good explanation <laughs> of rotoscoping, I really recommend that you watch our animation curriculum for self-taught artists. There are two parts, part one and part two. And remember, if you would like to submit your portfolio to be considered for a free critique live here on YouTube, just go to artprof.org. You want to click on teaching and learning and then go to art critiques. There is a purple button here where you can submit to be considered. And this is the submission form. And we will take a look at it and let you know. By the way, Fizza, I could not resist putting the thumbnail to your art school portfolio critique here because you and Labiba know each other. So there are many other critiques that you guys can go through. Maya Hika's portfolio critique. I know Maya Hika is live here in the chat. It's just so much fun when people that watch us get featured. It's just great to see that. Art Prof is a podcast. It's available on Spotify and also on iTunes. And in a few minutes, I will be hanging out in the Art Prof Discord. I will be in the post live streams channel if you guys would like to chat. Labiba, I don't know if you're in the Discord, but you might want to join all the cool kids because your friend Fizza is in there too. <laughs> so you may want to come see what the story is so everybody can talk to you about your work. Subscribe to our channel and you can develop and grow as an artist. And everybody, thank you so much to our top Patreon supporters. We greatly appreciate your support, which is so important in terms of keeping Art Prof up and running and always free and accessible to everybody. Labiba, thank you so much for sharing your work with us. Good luck with everything. Keep in touch with us. We'll see you next time.